Hi guys, happy Halloween. It's another spooktacular acrylic pore swipe with the awesome boogeyman silhouette. So you'll see I'm just applying my vinyl using some Liquid X gloss varnish. Links in the description if you want to check it out. And I'm using a wooden canvas this time. So it's uh, going to be a lot easier to get the vinyl off. I know usually I use a uh, canvas, but I wanted to use a wooden one for this one because I want to resin it after. So let's keep going. Okay, so this is dried. I got the cool boogeyman vinyl that has adhered and is sealed to the wooden canvas. Um, you're going to see that sometimes they can warp, mostly because I also didn't put the 1x2s on the back, but I can paint the back and kind of get it to warp back, so it should be okay. But for you guys, <laughs> this is just kind of a cool, spooky Halloween acrylic pour. I'm going to be using this Aquarius Glow in the Dark paint. It's Bright Aqua. I got this on Amazon. There'll be a link in the description. I used the whole little jar, so it should say on here how much... No, it doesn't really. How much? Oh yeah, 50 milliliters, 1.7 fluid ounces. So I used the whole jar. I filled up one of these little 7 ounce cups. So this is, it looks like white, but this is actually the Glow in the Dark Aqua. So I can tell it's very powdery. So I'm hoping this is going to work <laughs> with my swiping technique. Because this might be a little bit heavier, but I think it should. So there's enough mixture in there. And then I also have this really pretty, uh, this is the Color Flash Purple which is super pretty. So I got this big bottle. It's four fluid ounces on Amazon. So yeah, this is a purple flash by Color Shift. Then I got this brilliant pink. This is just Artist Loft Neon Pink. And I got this bright orange, which is a mixture of Artist Loft Neon Orange and also Pabeo 353 which is iridescent yellow orange. So I mixed these two together mostly because I was trying to use up what was left, but I almost had too much in that bottle. <laughs> so there's those ones and then I also mixed up some black. So it could be a very cool interesting swipe <laughs> with a lot of cool colors. Uh, obviously this is my swiping color which is the glow in the dark. And then the rest I'm going to pour over here. And I'm also going to use these colors over here. So to paint my cool Halloween scene on this side. And as you'll notice, I left the eyes out of the boogeyman. Because I think I might just take those vinyl eyes and put them on top of the pour afterwards. That way I don't have to paint them in and... They're already dark and you'll be able to see them. So I'm just going to put some silicone oil in just two drops in each of these colors so that we get a nice rejection kind of, I guess, <laughs> or the cells. All right, and paper towel, just grab some of that because all the colors are pretty much mixed up. All I do with the silicone is I just push it down. You don't want to mix it in too much because I want nice big cells. And the purple flash, which is so pretty. I don't think cameras do purple flash much justice, but it's really, really, any of the flash colors are really pretty to work with. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. I thought about doing it under neon lights. <laughs> But I don't know if it's, if the glow or this, maybe I should do the swipe under a couple of neon lights. See if I can videotape it. <laughs> um, I thought about it, but I don't know that it'll show up really good. So maybe I'll do another one and I'll try that out if this works really good. All right, guys. So I'm going to pour, I don't want too much black but I'm just going to pour colors and I'm not worried if it drips over the sides. I'm going to just go crazy 
no random, like just random patterning kind of thing of the boogie boogie man. <laughs> Might do a little bit over here in his arm since I already have it done up. Some bright pink. I think these colors are pretty fun for a bright colored Halloween swipe. Put a bit more. Oops. That is why we have paper towel. And I'm not worried about anything that all the paint that's pouring over. I'm going to make a paint skin. So that's all good if it pours over the edges. I got my lowly VFI silicone match, which is awesome. It's going to catch it and it's perfect for making paint skins. So there's links in the description to get 10% off your entire order from them too. So check that out. And here we're just doing some, I don't know, <laughs> some Halloween spooktacular randomness over here. I don't want too much black, so I might just kind of do this. Just to break up the color a little bit, but I don't want... the. Sometimes the dark black can be over cumbersome, so... Just going to break it up a little bit. It's like an abstract Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Not as good as his, but obviously. <laughs> He had some pretty amazing paintings. All right. I do like that though. Just even like, whoop. Pretty cool. This might be a little thick here where his hand is. And then, I don't know, should I bring something in right here? Maybe. <laughs> I'm in debates because I kind of wanted it to be all glowy. So I might leave his head just to be the glow in the dark so that it really contrasts with what I'm going to paint here. So here's some really bright neon colors. I got to make some room here and move some paint for the swipe. So you know, you don't have to rush too, too much. And I'm reusing, these were what I used to line up some tumblers. So obviously you can reuse the transparency as your swiping tool. But here is the beautiful glow in the dark. All right, it's a lot more liquidy. So I'm just going to kind of pour where I think the swipe should be. Make sure I have enough paint there for the swipe. I have a little bit extra too to fill in the head and stuff. Okay, I don't even know, this isn't even going to be large enough. <laughs> I might have to tape two together just to get, because it's only 11 and a half inches for the transparency. But you know, you kind of work on the fly. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a couple little pieces of tape on my swiping transparencies to just really there that should work now it's long enough now this could be the trick is not to hit the tripod over here <laughs> the tripod arm alright I think I'm just gonna go from here let it kinda populate And just really swipe over all the colors. This is where it's going to get hard because I'm going to hit the tripod. Oops. Ooh. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> See, and this can wooden canvas is larger, so... I don't have as much room on this. Save all that good paint on this uh, <laughs> jumbo jumbo silicone mat. Where is my torch? Just 
which is almost out of juice, I see. Let's give it a little bit of a torch, see if I should pull back again. I think I'm going to kind of right here pull some more. Like that. Ooh, pretty. This is coming in nicely. It's reacting a lot different than just like white paint wood that I normally use. I think because the black, the glow in the dark powder. But it is looking pretty cool. It is separating and lacing, so that's cool. Okay, so that is looking really cool. I'm just going to get some of my edges here. It's always the corners that'll get you. <laughs> It's really interesting because I can actually see the other paint underneath. So it's almost like the glow in the dark paint is translucent. So obviously to hold the glow in the dark pigment, it would have to kind of be translucent. But it did do some lacing. So I think I'm going to leave it because they might grow. They might not because the, the powder might be heavy for it. But what I do love is that I can just, I'm glad I kind of left his head. Because I'm just going to paint the glow in the dark color in. And this is just going to dry flat. So I'm just doing this so that it's kind of equal to the rest of the, like the silhouette part. I'm super excited on how that's going to look. Get his little finger here. Don't want to forget little parts. <laughs> oh, and I got this arm too. So I'm going to do put a whole bunch here. Fill out that finger there. And do a swipe just with the, uh, with the popsicle stick. Okay, let's ooh, wipe this off. It's my little cut off piece of popsicle stick. There we go. I like that. I think this is going to look pretty awesome give this portion a little torch. I find I have to kind of over torch a little like more so than usual just to get that lacing effect from this uh, glow in the dark paint. So just an FYI it is a lot thicker and my torch is almost out of butane so if you're wondering why I'm holding it so close it's because I got a short little flame going on. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let that dry. So it's going to be a few days and then going to see, uh, see what it looks like when it glows. This is obviously still going to glow. It's got a lot of the powder pigment that glows in the dark. I'm not, I'm hoping that it'll look really cool and webbed on the other side. But we'll have to see when we take this off. And then once it's dry, I will paint the negative side with a really cool Halloween scene. So it'll be a split second for you guys, but <laughs> it'll be a few days here of drying on a level surface, which is important. Okay, everything's dry. It's looking really awesome. I did discover that with this glow-in-the-dark paint, 
it's fairly translucent so I should have probably done the gesso and then actually painted it white and let it dry first because you can actually kind of see some of the the wooden like gesso grain coming through the glow in the dark and even where I had put the paint is showing through the border right here so a little unexpected I don't mind it it's kind of weird and creepy it does super glow really strong so that's really cool and it is kind of powdery uh, it does dry flat so no worries there um, we'll make it super easy to remove the vinyl because you can see the edge of the vinyl underneath as you can tell I'm gonna clean this part so to clean your uh, silicone cells here just a little piece of paper towel, some isopropyl alcohol, very easy stuff. I just put a little bit onto the paper towel so I can clean it. And important thing is just to make sure that you don't go over the same area twice until the alcohol has evaporated. So I'm just going to do a quick once over see just about that much came off which isn't too bad actually I didn't do this little part and this little part here not too bad at all actually so I wouldn't want to wipe again until this alcohol on here has evaporated so that's just a little hint otherwise you will take off quite a bit of your paint so I've never done a silhouette with glow-in-the-dark paint before so I'm kind of curious and but I am doing it on a wooden canvas so it's gonna make removing the vinyl you're gonna see how sharp that edge is right there super sharp no worrying about leakage underneath and it actually creates a little lip that you can hand paint up towards and stuff like that so I'm going to grab my X-Acto knife and scissors just to make it a little easier on myself. <laughs> now some areas, this is where the glow in the dark paint was fairly thick, but because it's not canvas underneath, I'm thinking it's actually lifting off pretty good. And the reason I wanted to get my scissors, whoops is that I'm just going to cut this part off as I go because this is a little bit more complicated vinyl just because we've got all these teeth and we're using glow-in-the-dark paint which is a little bit more powdery is the only word I can really it's because obviously it's got the glow-in-the-dark powder inside of it that it it kind of sits a little bit different than regular paint on top of the vinyl so we're gonna see it's not too bad peel that off. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not too bad. I might just kind of cut that. And now I'm really kind of glad that I left the eyes out. So I'm just going to keep going. Just take your time. Peel it off. For certain areas, like take off certain chunks makes it a little easier. Some of the vinyls, like if you were to do the wolf one or some of the simpler vinyl designs, you could probably reuse it when you peel it off of a wooden canvas because it's a lot easier. This one has a ton of teeth for the boogeyman, so I'm just going to... I think I'm actually just going to cut
right, so that didn't go too bad. Uh, this part was very thick, so that's why I had to use the X-Acto knife just to kind of help cut it because this paint is very quite thick. So <laughs> just a little bit different than normal acrylic paint, obviously because it's got a powdery pigment, which is the glow in the dark stuff in it. But it worked out really good, and I'm super excited to uh, to do the painting on this side. And I'm going to probably use the positive side to match up, so to protect this portion. I'm going to use the positive side of the vinyl to protect it. Now where the teeth are, and I kind of cut it, sometimes I cut in and stuff, but I think I can still make it work. Because I want to do an ombre effect with these colors on this side, which I think is going to look really cool. And then I'm going to do some spooky silhouettes on here. And then once I'm done, so I'll protect this side first, I'll add the vinyl eyes that I had peeled off from here after, and then I'll put a coat of resin over the whole thing, which will protect it. And that way the vinyl eyes will just be inside there. You can paint the eyes back on with black paint. It's up to you because obviously the cutouts are going to be right here, so something to watch out for when you're painting and you're using it because the eyes are cut out. So I could just paint these in black right here once I put this on. So I'm gonna take this off and peel, peel it onto the painting. Let's see how much time we got there. So I'll work on this, transferring it over, and then we'll be ready to paint the negative side. What I might do is cut right here. So don't be afraid to cut like portions of the vinyl, then you could line it up if it makes it easier for you to transfer. Because I just think that sometimes you gotta watch that it doesn't stick onto itself like this. <laughs> if it does just carefully remove it. It will come off, it's just sometimes if you were to pull it really roughly, it's not going to stick as nice. Okay, so as you can see, I've taped the eyes off because obviously these are the eyes. <laughs> and I can also paint over the whole thing. I just want to protect them when I do the ombre effect with the paint. And everything kind of lined up absolutely perfect. There's just a little bit right here. So I'll just show you, like if you ever have it, the vinyl where it's kind of close, you're a little worried, you can just take some painter's tape to like extend it a little bit. So. There's just a little portion right there. I'll just use my nail to var burnish it down a bit and just kind of protect the edge. So I thought I would show you guys that. Because right up here, we just want to protect the edge there. Obviously, the boogeyman is a little bit more of the complicated silhouette, <laughs> but he's still pretty cool. So I'm just, yeah using some painter's tape as a precaution to extend. I could put some here too, just to extend where it gets close as a precautionary measure. Nice part is, is that the vinyl, the painter's tape, it's not gonna wreck your painting. It's gonna just protect it, and then you could peel it off. So the fun part is using all these vibrant colors to create an ombre effect. I think I'm going to go from to purple up here. So I got the color flash which I'll put there. So I'll go from purple to pink to the orange down here. I believe will be my plan. <laughs> I was thinking of going purple to bright, but I think I'm going to go dark to light because I'm going to put those little 
a little bunch of Halloween silhouettes over here. I think it'll be cool. It'll be a really fun <laughs> Halloween themed. And I got a nice big brush so I can really do the ombre back and forth. I love that these, you can buy these on Amazon and it's a nice big bottle of the purple flash, which might need a few, a few coats. We'll see how it coats on here. There we go. So pretty. Very, very pretty stuff. I still got lots in there. And then I'm going to go to pink, which I'm hoping I have enough. So actually, I'm going to spread that purple out for see how far down we kind of get before I put the pink on. Just to see because I've got a lot of purple flash and I kind of want it to come down to here. So the when you're doing it with the vinyl, you know, you want to make sure to go kind of like this, but you're going to see it's going to create see how it misses right here. That's because this ha created such a lip because it was so thick the paint. Which was good because it I used the whole jar of that glow in the dark and it really glows. <laughs> so once I've pushed down on the vinyl, kind of like that, just to make sure I'm not pushing under it, I can kind of go towards it afterwards and back and forth, if that makes sense. And don't forget to get the edges with the color that you're using. So up here we've got the purple, so I'm going to bring it all the way down. Just make sure I get that good and covered. It's hard to see the top. <laughs> and I like to use a lot of paint when I do the ombres, especially with the acrylic paint because that way it stays, you could put extenders in to make it not dry so fast, but I'm just going to use a fair amount. That way I get good coverage too. So here I want to just push, make sure that that vinyl is staying down first before you ever kind of go across it the opposite direction. So push it down even up here. This one created a very large lip of paint. Get that covered, I hope. Oop. If I have to, I can put some of this paint back into the jar as well. So if you pour out too much, don't be afraid to also just put some back. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so cool. So I'm going to add some extra in here. Then I might not have to do any other layers or extra painting because we have enough. So I think I've got quite a bit of purple. I might actually put some back into the jar because you don't want to waste. But it's just as easy as picking it up, putting it back in the jar if you got too much, and then just making sure that you got everything covered. And if I have to, I can take some more out of the jar. There's lots of options. Okay, so I've mixed up too much of the orange, and because it's a mixture, I can't put it back in the jar. But these are available on the Lowly Vifi website. They're these really awesome cups with lids. So I can keep this paint and do another cool project with it by just picking it up 
and putting it into one of these jars just like so and that way and then I can just put the lid on might snap there we go and I can use that for another project so that's pretty cool I was super stoked about those little cups especially if you mix up a color and it you know it's not straight from the jar and you're mixing up a different color and you want to keep it so you don't waste any that's definitely an option and then like I said if I had put too much back I can always pull some back out of there Okay, I don't want to play with it too much. <laughs> Sometimes you end up wrecking it. But I am going to take it off because I want to, if there's any areas that I got to fix right up against the vinyl, I'm going to do it while the paint is wet on that. Beautiful ombre. So this one was peeled in two. Look at that. That looks pretty perfect for the glow in the dark. I'm just going to get everything that's above it off first. So I don't have any issues when taking off the larger part. Good to have your exacto ready. Two to peel this off. I might cut pieces of it. Like right here. There. Other than that, actually, it worked out really good. Everything looks pretty clean. So that wasn't too difficult. <laughs> That's obviously going to have to dry, but I love, love, love what, how it's looking for the beautiful scene on the negative side. Mm -hmm. 